Renegade is Jeep's interpretation of what a compact crossover or small SUV really should be, and it's very different to anything else we've seen. Quirky looks and characterful detailing hide conventional Fiat underpinnings, but four-wheel drive is an option further up the range where there's off-road prowess surpassing anything else in the segment. It won't appeal to everyone, but if you like it, you'll probably love it. Take a respected brand, a fresh and vibrant market segment, and a willingness to do something different. Then create from that a product with uncompromising looks, real capability, and clever design. The result you get certainly wouldn't be ordinary. It wouldn't please traditionalists. No, in automotive terms, what you get would be something like this, the Jeep Renegade. You don't need me to tell you that this is a very different kind of Jeep, but then it had to be. This, you see, is the new face of a company that's been busy reinventing itself, something all great brands occasionally have to do. Land Rover and Jaguar long ago realised that they couldn't sustain themselves on traditional customers, and in recent years, Jeep has been working that out too. The company's under Fiat ownership these days, and for years now, its product range has relied heavily on Latin design and borrowed Italian parts. The Renegade, though, is the first Jeep model to be entirely designed as part of this collaboration. The first, in fact, ever to be built outside of the United States. It's certainly a landmark product, then. Whether it's a proper Jeep, though, is another question entirely. Pragmatists within the Fiat empire will argue that it doesn't need to be. There aren't many customers wanting such a thing these days, and those that are around certainly won't be buying in the growing market sector this car primarily targets. That for compact Nissan Juke-style crossover models. If Jeep is to have a credible future, it can't afford to ignore this segment. But at the same time, it can't abandon its rugged brand values and bring us the kind of stylized piece of street furniture we've seen many of the mainstream manufacturers deliver when it comes to this kind of car. News that this Renegade is almost entirely based on just such a thing, Fiat's 500X might have Jeep diehards choking on their beer. Still, these people need to allow for the fact that much has been done with these underpinnings in creation of a tougher, more rugged and very different product, certainly one that should attract widespread interest. Ultimately, being super mini based on a Fiat Punto derived platform, this car's roots lie in the Duke genre, but at the same time, it's a slightly larger, more adventurous thing than its Fiat 500X cousin. There's greater practicality than you might expect from a model in this sector, and the option of class-leadingly impressive off-road prowess, if you're prepared to pay for it. Hence, an appeal that might also attract buyers of bigger family hatch-based crossovers like Nissan's Qashqai, and possibly even prestigiously badged compact crossover models like Audi's Q3 and BMW's X1. The Renegade's premium pricing certainly invites comparisons with cars of that kind, and across the range its SUV look and feel offers a new dimension for buyers in this segment. Time to put it to the test. Jeep doesn't like the term crossover, preferring to call this Renegade a small SUV. I would agree that in its top four-wheel drive guises, that's exactly what it is, but those pricey derivatives are only going to account for a tiny proportion of overall sales. When it comes to the Renegade variants, almost everyone will actually buy front-driven models that do without jacked-up suspension and trail-rated credentials. The compact crossover Duke genre segment tag fits precisely, uh, or as precisely as it can, on a car that's a little bigger than the class norm. These volume versions are based around two 1.6-litre engines, a 110 brake horsepower e-torque petrol unit and an infinitely preferable 120 brake horsepower multi-jet diesel with more than twice as much pulling power. Both these variants manage around 110 miles an hour flat out, but with the diesel, the rest to 62 mile an hour time improves from 11.8 seconds to 10.2 seconds, and there's far more overtaking punch. 
if you want even more of that, then at the next level in the lineup, there's a gutsier pair of power plants on offer. The smooth but rather thirsty 1.4 litre multi air petrol unit or the 2 litre multi jet 140 brake horse pad diesel we're trying here. Progressing to this point in the range opens up the availability of automatic transmission and four wheel drive. And when it comes to multi air petrol power, both those things can come packaged up with a Pokia 170 brake horsepower engine capable of 62 miles an hour in 8.8 .8 seconds en route to 122 miles an hour. Most Renegade multi air petrol buyers will, though, be happy with the lesser 140 brake horsepower two wheel drive model that manages 112 miles an hour flat out and makes the 62 mile an hour benchmark in 10.9 seconds, or fractionally longer than that if you opt for the optional DDCT automatic gearbox. That DDC dual clutch auto gives you six speeds, but more powerful automatic models further up the range get a more sophisticated nine speed unit the first of its kind in this segment. As I mentioned though, we've actually opted here for the 2 litre multi-jet diesel engine, a unit that comes mated only to four-wheel drive. All-wheel drive traction tends to be something that cars of this kind usually steer clear of for all their aesthetic ruggedness. Indeed, this Jeep's two most comparable premium priced compact crossover segment rivals, Honda's HRV and Mazda CX-3, don't offer it at all. Here though, you not only get a 4x4 setup, but actually you're all provided with a rather good one, a Jeep Active Drive system using the same so-called rear axle disconnect system you'll also find on a Range Rover Evoque. Here it benefits from an increase in Renegade ride height, up from the modest 175mm of two-wheel drive models to 198mm if you get this Jeep with four-wheel drive. And crucially it's been paired to the brand's excellent Select Terrain system. Select Terrain is a setup designed to replicate the feeling of having an off-road expert sitting next to you as you drive. With a twist of the rotary select terrain dial that four-wheel drive renegades offer in front of the gear stick, you can choose between a series of customized settings to suit the ground you're traveling over. There are snow, sand or mud modes if you've at least some idea of what you're doing. But if you haven't, then simply select the auto setting and leave the car to sort itself out. There's also a lock mode that'll keep all the wheels turning at the same speed if you end up with your Renegade somewhere you really shouldn't have ventured to in the first place. Go for a top spec 2 litre multi jet 140 brake horsepower model fitted with that 9 speed automatic gearbox I was telling you about, and you also get an active drive low uh, setup featuring a low range gear ratio for really gnarly terrain. Plus, you'll be able to ease down slippery slopes with a built-in hill descent control feature. By that point in the lineup, though, you'll be paying so much money that you really might as well go the whole hog and buy this car in its most capable Trailhawk guise. Stretch to this top model and you'll get yourself a small 4x4 that's not only more capable than any crossover, but is also unrivaled by any other small SUV. In a Trailhawk Renegade, you could really make full use of that low range gear mode, thanks to an even higher 210 mm ride height, which along with restyled bumpers, will allow you to attack really testing terrain. The approach, departure and breakover angles you get on the normal 4x4 version of this Jeep, 21 degrees, uh, 32 degrees and 23 degrees, are on a Trailhawk model improved dramatically to 30 degrees, 34 degrees and 24 degrees. Plus, trail halt buyers get an extra rock mode on the select terrain system, cementing this variant's top trail rated status. It's all very impressive, but as I suggested at the beginning, ultimately somewhat irrelevant in terms of the affordable, modestly powered two wheel drive Renegade models that the majority of customers will choose. And here lies the problem. It's very hard to take a car that's so potentially capable off-road and create from it a two-wheel drive, more tarmac-orientated version that's as good as less rugged rivals on a paved surface. 
Jeep has certainly tried hard to do that, something aided by underpinnings that this car shares with its FCA group cousin and crossover segment rival, the Fiat 500X. And to some extent, those efforts have borne fruit, with grip levels reasonable and body roll decently controlled. For all that though, this isn't a car that particularly likes being hurried along. Despite torque vectoring to aid cornering traction, you certainly won't be throwing yourself through a series of bends in the way that you might be tempted to in, say, rivals like Nissan's Duke or Mazda CX-3. The very firm ride, the notchy gearbox and the rather vague steering all mitigate against that. Plus, the uh, bluff shape and those big door mirrors mean that it's a little noisy at speed. In some ways, though, all these things are part of the Renegade's charm. Don't get us wrong, you can push things along quite quickly in this Jeep if you need to. It certainly isn't clunky in an old-school lumbering SUV kind of way, but there's more than a whiff of that in the measured, ever so slightly ponderous way it responds to your commands. Having done a few miles in this car now, I've decided I rather like that. Arguably, it's all bound up in the authenticity that should be part of the whole Renegade experience, and it makes this car very different not only from its Fiat 500X design stablemate, but also from just about any other crossover segment model you might care to name. At the wheel of this car, there's no fake Duke genre pretense of ruggedness. Instead, you know you're in a Jeep, not only because of the shape and the quirky little design details, but because of the capable, solid, unbreakable feel that's delivered as you drive. And that's exactly as it should be. Now, whatever you think of the stylized compact crossover segment, it certainly brought us some interesting pieces of design. At one extreme, you've this bluff, tough looking Jeep Renegade, aesthetically equipped for a trip into the Serengeti. At the other, there's a car like Fiat's 500X, with attitude far better suited to the speed humps in Sloan Square. Given this, you wouldn't expect these two models to have much in common, but in fact, under the skin, they share almost everything and roll along the same production lines at the Fiat Chrysler conglomerate's Italian Melfi factory. A better example of product differentiation from a common platform would be difficult to find. Thanks to this approach, there's fundamentally little that's actually very American about this car, but that fact's been artfully disguised with packaging that draws deeply from the iconic roots of this distinctive Yankee brand. The rugged, squirrel shape with its short overhangs and beefy bumpers is classic Jeep, as is the signature seven-slot grille flanked by circular headlights that are tucked slightly under the leading edge of the aluminium bonnet for a more contemporary look. In profile, the theme continues with classic trapezoidal wheel arches, rugged lower side sill cladding, and a raised belt line that's supposed to reference the tough Jeep Wrangler model's half doors. From this perspective, you also appreciate the Renegade to be a slightly larger thing than most contemporary models in the compact crossover class. Like most brands that are either unable or unwilling to provide us with both smaller and larger contenders in this market, Jeep has developed one size to straddle the sector's two main segments, these covering either super mini-based Duke-style models or family hatchback-based Qashqai-style contenders. Hence, dimensions that make this car 1.2 metres longer than a Nissan Duke and 1.2 metres shorter than a Qashqai. Other brands have also tried this trick and bought us similar cars of this kind, like Honda's HRV and Mazda's CX-3. Ultimately though, as with this Fiat Punto-based Jeep, they're limited by the restrictions of a super mini-based platform that can only be stretched so far. In this case, that means 4.2 metres of total length that's just enough to give this car the chunky military surplus look of a Hummer saved from a hot wash. That's something perhaps most evident at the rear. 
Here at the back, the square Wrangler style tail lamps feature the distinctive Renegade X icon you'll also find elsewhere on the car. It's an important graphic for the brand, inspired by the design of the vintage jerry cans that played as much a part in winning World War II as the original 1941 Willys Jeep did itself. And up front, well, the quirkiness continues in the details. The Jeep face, round headlights and that seven-slot front grille is embossed into the speaker covers, the seat backs and the fairing behind the rearview mirror. Then there are these outer vents, shaped apparently to reflect the design of base jumping equipment. The trim surrounding these, the gear stick and the cup holders can, as you can see, be brightly colour coordinated as an option. What else? Well, this uh, central ventilation pod is modelled on a set of ski goggles. There are front cup holders featuring the same X design as the tail lamps and rather incredibly the rubberized mats you'll find in the lower centre console storage compartment and at the bottom of the centre storage box have services moulded into the topography of the Moab Desert. Yes, really. Finally, lest you forget what you're driving, a since 1941 slogan is branded into the centre of the dash. Now some of this stuff works, and some of it, a bit like the spider inside the petrol flap waving chow baby, really doesn't. Ahead of you, the chunkily distinctive three-spoke multifunction steering wheels, very Jeep specific too. And through it, you glimpse a rev counter that for some reason feels the need to feature a mud splat instead of a red line. More noticeable though, at least on the plush variant I'm trying here, is what lies between the two main dials. Affordable Renegade models get the usual information screen here, but this top limited version features something much classier. A bigger, customizable 7-inch TFT colour display that, amongst other things, can show navigation, speed, real-time economy, audio information and safety warnings. It's an example of the kind of smart, clever design you'll also find elsewhere around the front of this car. Take the way that this beefy passenger grab handle is smoothly integrated into the air vent, for example. The circular ventilation controls are nice too, and everything seems to have been decently screwed together by the Italian factory. There are areas, though, where a little more thought might have paid dividends. The dashboard top that you'll rarely touch is fashioned from lovely soft touch plastic, but the materials around the centre tunnel that you'll feel every time you release the fiddly electronic handbrake are hard and scratchy. The seats could also be better, lacking a little in long journeying support and offering headrests that don't adjust high enough so they dig into your shoulders a bit. The thick pillars are somewhat restrictive in terms of visibility too, though this fault's easy to forgive given that the cabin itself is so glassy, airy and practical too. You get door bins that are bigger than they look, a glove box big enough to swallow a tablet and USB aux in and 12 volt input points. Pride of place in the centre of the fascia is reserved for this Uconnect TFT colour touchscreen. In the larger Cherokee model, you get this feature in 8.4 inch size, but here, the biggest version on offer, that's the one we've got here, is 6.5 inches, and cheaper variants make do with a smaller 5 inch display. As on other Fiat Chrysler models, the setup's admirably clear and intuitive to use, with voice activation and control systems that are easy to figure out, so you won't have to be delving into the manual every time you want to uh, Bluetooth pair your phone or find a point of interest on this sat-nav. Now, for best use of this infotainment setup, you'll want to download the compatible Uconnect Live app onto your smartphone that will allow you to customise your onboard entertainment, accessing internet radio, online music and social media. Plus, you'll receive updates on your vehicle status and have all information relating to your journey brought to you in real time. Time to move back to the rear, noticing on the way how accessible this boxy cabin is. The front doors open out to an angle of 70 degrees, while these at the rear pull back even wider to 80 degrees. Now, for anyone used to cars in this class who's tried to cram an older person into the back of something like a Nissan Duke, it'll be a pleasant change. 
take a seat in the back and the first thing you notice is the vast headroom enabled by the boxy shape. Now that's particularly good news if you were thinking of paying extra for one of the big glass panoramic roofs that are now common in this segment. Yes, this Jeep offers one of those too. Normally, this feature compromises crucial inches of headroom for rear seat folk, not in this case. As well as the usual dual pane electric sliding top, the Renegade offers something even better, a so-called My Sky roof arrangement, consisting of two separate panels that can be removed and stored in the boot, creating a real open-air driving experience. This was the first Fiat Chrysler automobile conglomerate model to use what the group calls its small, wide 4x4 architecture. And sure enough, in terms of exterior dimensions, this small Jeep is indeed wider than its most comparable premium-priced compact crossover segment rivals. To be specific, 33mm wider than a Honda HRV and 40mm wider than a Mazda CX-3. I have to say though that across this back seat you don't really notice that. There's certainly decent space for two, but three adults would need to be on personable terms over a longer trip, particularly given that legroom is as restricted as it usually is in this class of crossover. The result in this Renegade is a model that would make an excellent family second car, but might not be the best choice for parents in search of a principal vehicle. Now back. Well, we'd expected the squirrel styling and longer than average vehicle length to deliver class leading standards of space. But in fact, the chunky tailgate rises to reveal one of the smaller boots in the compact crossover segment. This one, 351 litres in size. That makes it certainly more restricted than the trunk you get in rivals like, say, Skoda's Yeti or Honda's HRV. More comparable instead to the space you'd find in a Nissan Juke or indeed in this car's curvier cousin, the Fiat 500X. Still, there's about as much room here as you get in an ordinary focus-sized family hatchback, and you do at least get this adjustable height boot floor that, as an option, can be uh, specified in <laughs> reversible uh, form with an easy wipe clean surface. Now, under the floor panel, uh, you uh, can, on standard models, store smaller items, but here, as you can see, the space is entirely occupied by the optional full-sized spare wheel. We'd always recommend you specify on such a capable vehicle. If you need more room, then the seats fold forward with the usual 60-40 split. Jeep also offers a more versatile 40-20-40 split folding arrangement, but annoyingly only does so on the top Trailhawk version of this car. Once you have folded everything flat, 1,297 litres of carriage capacity is opened up. Plus, there's a fold flat front passenger seat for use if you're regularly going to be carrying really long items. This Renegade is primarily intended to compete with smaller crossovers of the Duke genre, models that, like this one, are based on super mini underpinnings. It targets the top of this segment though, and like some other recent arrivals in the sector, has been priced ambitiously. So ambitiously, in fact, that in buying one of these, you'll be paying the sort of money that would also get you a slightly larger crossover from the next class up. Models like uh, Nissan's Qashqai and Peugeot's 3008 that are based on larger focus-sized family hatchbacks. To be specific, you're looking at paying somewhere in the £17,500 to £29,000 bracket for this little Jeep. Still, at least that slots it into the American brand's lineup very neatly, making this car the perfect stepping stone into the company's larger Cherokee model. As for the Renegade customer proposition, well, think in terms of three buying levels across the range. At the foot of the lineup, there's entry level sport trim with two wheel drive and 1.6 litre petrol or diesel engine options. Here, we'd suggest that the £1,700 premium for multi-jet diesel power would be money well spent. Select this unit and you'll have the option of finding a further £1,900 for plusher mid-range longitude trim. 
Longitude models represent the second and most popular buying stage in the Renegade range, a level that opens up a wider choice of more powerful engines, plus the option of automatic transmission and the feature we probably most associate with Jeep, four-wheel drive. That all-wheel drive traction comes ready packaged in with the larger two-litre multi-jet diesel engine that we've been trying here. Meanwhile, if you want automatic transmission on a longitude variant, that's an option on the pokier petrol engine you can have at this level, a 140 brake horsepower, 1.4 litre multi-air turbo unit. The top tier of Renegade ownership is epitomised by plush limited spec models that require the kind of budget you'd normally expect to have to find for proper SUVs like Honda's CRV and Toyota's RAV4. Here, Jeep offers buyers the best of its technology, a more sophisticated active drive low four-wheel drive system and Pokia 170 brake horsepower petrol and diesel units mated to a segment-leading nine-speed automatic gearbox. All these things feature on the flagship Trailhawk version that's been equipped to go further off the beaten track than any other car in this class. On to the value proposition that Renegade pricing delivers. As I've already suggested, this isn't the small crossover to choose if you want the very cheapest option in this segment. The least expensive Nissan Duke and Renault Capture petrol and diesel models are priced up to £4,000 below the money that you'd pay for an equivalent version of this Jeep. Though it's worth remembering that in both cases you're getting significantly less power and equipment for your money. Indeed, the same argument could be made in relation to any of the small crossover models able to significantly undercut the cost of this car. Models like Peugeot's 2008, Citroen's C4 Cactus, Ford's Eco Sport, Suzuki's Vitara and the Kia Soul. Jeep's objective is to target buyers looking at pricier up-spec versions of contenders like these and offer them a more sophisticated, characterful choice with better performance but very comparable running costs. These are attributes that will also help this Renegade stand out against cheaper crossovers that get closer to Jeep's asking prices. Cars like Vauxhall's Mocha, uh, Skoda's Yeti and the model that this one is based upon, Fiat's 500X. Now the Fiat uses many of the same engines you'll find here and in some cases charges significantly less for them but of course it's a very different, less capable kind of product. A closer match in terms of price, though not in ruggedness, can be found with premium compact crossovers like Mazda CX-3 and Honda's HRV. Maybe also Mini's Countryman, though a comparable version of one of those would actually cost you quite a bit more than a Renegade. Buyers of this Jeep attracted by a four-wheel drive version like this one might also be people looking at spending similar money on small 4x4 SUVs like Subaru's XV or a top-spec version of Sanyong's Corando. Bear in mind too that choosing a pricier Renegade variant takes you near to the kind of pricing territory that would otherwise net you a prestigiously badged small crossover, models like Audi's Q3 and BMW's X1. There's a lot to consider then in carefully thinking through the marketing proposition on offer here. When all's said and done though, we can see a small but pretty significant group of buyers concluding that there really is nothing quite like a renegade. If you're one of these people, you're going to need to know just how generous the American brand has been with the standard spec. So time for some detail on that. Even entry-level sport models come with 16-inch alloy wheels, daytime running lights, auto headlamps, electric mirrors, all-round power windows, an alarm, and a neat shark fin roof antenna. Inside, you get air conditioning, a six-way adjustable driver's seat, Bluetooth phone connectivity, and a multifunction steering wheel, via which you can control a decent quality four-speaker DAB stereo. That's also accessible via the standard 5-inch Uconnect touchscreen, the portal through which you can activate a whole range of infotainment services. Download the Uconnect Live uh, app onto your smartphone and you'll be able to access internet radio, uh, online music and Reuters news at the same time as keeping yourself connected through Facebook and Twitter. 
If you've decided on a Renegade but want to treat yourself to something a bit nicer than sport level trim, then you'll want to look at finding the £1,900 premium Jeep asks for its mid-range longitude spec. Here you get larger 17-inch wheels, front fog lights, roof rails, cruise control with a speed limiter, leather for the steering wheel, extra stereo speakers and satellite navigation. To get everything that the interior of this car can offer though, you'll need the plush limited spec we've got here that adds the 7-inch TFT instrument display and larger 6.5-inch Uconnect central dash infotainment screen that really complete the look of this Renegade's cabin. At limited level, you also get leather seats that are heated at the front, 18-inch wheels, privacy glass, rear parking sensors, a heated steering wheel and climate control with a useful automatic defog function that never allows the windscreen to mist up. You also get a package of safety features I'll cover in a minute. When it comes to the options list, bear in mind that it's not really possible to buy an entry-level sport model, then add in the extra cost things you want. Most optional features require you to have progressed at least to mid-range longitude trim. We certainly think you'd need a spare wheel on a car of this kind, and while box ticking, we'd want to look at the electric sliding panoramic glass roof. Plus maybe the function pack, which can come either with or without powered seat adjustment and includes power folding mirrors, a keyless entry and start system, storage under the front passenger seat, and a reversible and height adjustable cargo floor. There's also a visibility pack that gives you automatically activated HID Xenon smart beam headlamps, rain sensing wipers and an electrochromatic rear view mirror. Our favourite optional items though are unfortunately limited to the top limited and trailhawk models. Namely an infotainment pack that gives you a premium nine speaker Beats by Dr Dre audio system and the clever My Sky roof that gives you two removable glass panels that when stowed allow for a real open air driving experience. What else? Well there's a huge range of alloy wheels and you get a wide selection of paint options including various shades that contrast with a black roof. Want to go further? If so you can customise the look of your Renegade to your heart's content thanks to Jeep's Mopar accessory range which offers things like mirror covers and front grills in different shades, plus a series of different stickers for the bonnet, the doors and the rear side panels. Among them, the iconic US Army star in either black or white. If you're likely to be joining the local rednecks for a nighttime rabbit shoot, you'll be needing the roof mounted lights. And as you'd expect from a modern lifestyle orientated car, there's a wide selection of roof boxes and tow bar mounted systems designed for transporting winter and water sports equipment, such as bikes, surfboards, skis and snowboards. On to safety. All models get the expected things, Isofix child seat fastening, tyre pressure monitoring, an energy absorbing steering column, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and twin front side and curtain airbags. To try and make sure those bags won't be needed, there's plenty of electronic assistance. ESC stability control and electronic roll mitigation of course, plus all speed traction control and a brake traction control system to offer extra grip uh, on start off or through the bends. The ABS braking system features panic brake assist and ready alert braking to quicken emergency stops. There's a DST driving steering torque system to counter scary oversteer on low grip services and trailer sway control will come in useful too if you'll be fitting a tow bar and doing some towing. If you're tempted to go further, you'll find that Jeep has really gone to town with some of the high-tech safety options. The adaptive cruise control system that automatically keeps you a set distance behind the car in front on the motorway is worth looking at. And this limited spec model includes, as standard, two key safety pack items that are optional on other variants. 
lane sense lane departure warning to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway and forward collision warning with crash mitigation. That's a system that scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then the car will automatically brake itself, decreasing the severity of any resulting accident. You can also specify a blind spot monitoring system, which warns you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake another car. This feature will come included if you're investing in the parking pack that not only gives you a rear view camera and a park assist system to guide you into spaces, but also includes a rear cross path detection system to alert you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking bay. Given Jeep's traditional emphasis on solid build and heavy four-wheel drive systems, efficiency has never been a brand's strong point. The Fiat Chrysler Group are determined that it will be going forward though, which was the whole reason why they based this Renegade on their relatively economical Fiat 500X crossover model. Because this chunkier Renegade is about 70 kilograms heavier than the 500X, the engines it shares with its Fiat cousin don't function quite as economically here, or at least the diesel ones don't. There's not much in it though, hence a set of running cost returns that should reassure buyers new to the brand. Take the version of this car that most will probably want, the 1.6 litre Multijet 120 diesel. This manages 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2. Even this four-wheel drive 2-litre multi-jet diesel model manages 55.4 miles to the gallon and 134 grams per kilometre, provided you order it in standard 140 brake horsepower active drive form. Go for this model with automatic transmission and the more capable active drive low four-wheel drive setup though and your returns will take a bit of a hit, falling to 48.7 miles to the gallon and 150 grams per kilometre. At the top of the range, the Go Anywhere Trail Halt version gets the 2-litre multi-jet diesel unit with 170 brake horsepower, plus that active drive low four-wheel drive package with automatic transmission, and manages 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 155 grams per kilometre of CO2. The Trail Halt model's figures are pretty comparable to those that you could expect if you were to fuel this Renegade from the green pump. Both mainstream petrol engines, the 110 brake horsepower 1.6 litre e-torque unit and the 140 brake horsepower multi-air power plant manage 47.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and around 140 grams per kilometre of CO2. The preferable multi-air variant can be ordered in DDCT six-speed automatic form with barely any running cost penalty. Go for that multi-air engine in top 170 brake horsepower guys, where it's mated with a heavier 9-speed auto gearbox and uh, four-wheel drive, and running costs inevitably rise a little. You're looking at 40.9 miles to the gallon and 160 grams per kilometre of CO2. So, you get the point. Jeep is now there or thereabouts when it comes to running cost returns. Indeed, in most cases, the only directly competitive models that can better this Renegade in this regard are significantly less capable vehicles. So, how has Jeep done it? The brand points to things like optimised aerodynamics, um, electric power steering and detailed touches like the lightweight aluminium wheels help too. Engine efficiency is aided by a very sophisticated exhaust gas recirculation system and a particularly effective uh, close coupled diesel particulate filter. Plus of course there's a usual stop start system which cuts the engine when you don't need it stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. The 4x4 versions do so well thanks to features like the rear axle disconnect system which seamlessly switches into two-wheel drive when 4x4 traction isn't needed. Of course, the ultimate figures you achieve will depend very much on how you drive, something you can monitor and improve if you've downloaded the infotainment system's Uconnect Live app onto your smartphone. This gives you an eco-drive section that enables you to develop your driving style, save fuel and check your car's CO2 emissions in real time. 
During each trip, EcoDrive monitors four driving parameters, acceleration, deceleration, changing gears, and speed variation. There's also a My Car feature that allows you to check your fuel level and tire pressure, choose an assistance service if you have an emergency, and be informed if there's anything wrong with your vehicle. What else might you need to know? Well, there's an unremarkable three-year, 60,000-mile warranty, though you do get three years of breakdown cover included in the deal. We'd want to opt for the Mopar Vehicle Protection Freedom Pack, which extends the warranty to five years and provides competitively priced servicing and assistance plans. On to insurance groups. In the petrol range, you're looking at Group 80 for the 1.6-litre e-torque model and Groups 9E or 10E for the 1.4-litre multi-air 140 brake horsepower variant. The pricey 1.4-litre multi-air 170 brake horsepower automatic four-wheel drive derivative is Group 15E. In the diesel range, the base 1.6-litre multi-jet 120 model is rated at either Group 12E or 13E, while this 2-litre multi-jet 140 brake horsepower four-wheel drive variant is pitched at Group 14E. The top four-wheel drive automatic trail hawk model with its 170 brake horsepower 2-litre multi-jet diesel is rated at Group 15E. This Renegade brings a long overdue dose of credibility to the crossover segment. Here you get plenty of style in a bluff, tough, jeep kind of way, but there's decent substance behind that too, with near family sized practicality and the potential for far more off-road prowess than any other car in this segment can provide. So you get a little more than you might expect to from this class of car, which is just as well given premium pricing that lifts this Jeep well clear of cheaper offerings in the Duke genre. If you're okay with that and dig the distinctive look, then potentially there's much to like here. The efficient engineering, strong safety standards and high-tech features you'd want a reasonably expensive family car to provide are here packaged with a depth of character you simply wouldn't think you'd find at this price point. The result is the kind of car people talk about, the sort almost everyone will have an opinion on, so shy and retiring types should shop elsewhere. Traditional Jeep buyers probably will. If you eat squirrel, own a bowling ball and call your first cousin your spouse, then a renegade won't be your cup of tea. For everyone else though, this is Jeep's most accessible model yet. Certainly you could argue that ride and handling have been slightly compromised as part of the desire to preserve the company's off-road credibility, but that's the price you pay for the kind of authenticity this brand has been providing since 1941. Ultimately, what's important here is that Jeep has a new direction and a more relevant product to offer buyers who never previously would have considered one of its cars. These people will like the fact that in a sea of compact crossovers, this one's very different from the norm. A renegade, if you like. Perhaps just as every Jeep should be.